واپ کر دینا چاہیے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر جمیل عباس فرام دا فیزیولوجی ڈپارٹمنٹ آف دا فیصل اللہ پات میڈیکل یونیورسٹی اینڈ دس لیکچر از ان کنٹینیوشن آف دا اینڈوکرنالوجی پینکریاز انسولین اینڈ دین دیز اے ڈائبٹیز ڈائبٹیز میلائٹس دیر ٹو ٹائپس آف ڈائبٹیز ڈائبٹیز میلائٹس اینڈ دا ڈائبٹیز انسپیٹس ڈائبٹیز انسپیٹس کنسرن وتھ اے ڈی ایچ وائل دا ڈائبٹیز میلائٹس کنسرن وتھ دا insulin that's why we are going to start with the diabetes mellitus which is a complication of the low insulin when the insulin is not there or the insulin is not working properly on the receptor the disease is known as the diabetes mellitus di means uh, bowel and the mellitus means the sweet thing the diabetes mellitus the here is a slide in which you can see the regulation of plasma glucose level The plasma glucose level is tightly regulated by the hormone. Insulin is responsible for the decrease in plasma glucose level. While the plasma glucose level can be increased by the glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, growth hormones. On the other side, if you see that, on the other side, you can see the pancreas is going to release uh, the insulin in the blood vessels. And whenever there is a high blood glucose level that is above 110, the pancreas begins to secrete insulin from its beta cells. And then this insulin is going to inhibit the glucagon first. Then it will cause the uh, glucose reproduction that the gluconeogenesis is reduced. Then on the other side, it causes the uptake of the glucose by the muscles and the adipose tissues. And it will cause the increase in glucose uptake and glucose storage. Actually, in the liver, there is a lot of, uh, you can see, uh, functions of the insulin in the liver that it causes the movement of the liver, uh, glucose into the liver and glucose is going to be stored there in the form of glycogen. Now, how we can define the diabetes? Actually, we have got a new term, which is you know, the pre-diabetics. The pre-diabetics and the diabetics. Diabetes, simply the diabetes means hyperglycemia. And pre-diabetics means those patients, those persons who have got very small, you can very slight hyperglycemia, still they can't under the heading of diabetes, but we name them as pre-diabetes, that means in future they can be a diabetic patient. So here is a different sort of diagnostic values. If the hemoglobin A1c, actually the hemoglobin A1c is the test which is used Uh, for the estimation or rough estimation of the previous 100 days of the uh, glucose level. That this is the A1, hemoglobin A1C, that is the glyc uh, glycated hemoglobin. Now, if, first we will see the normal thing. If it is, it is normal value is approximately 5. And some books say 5.5 is a normal. Then if it is about 5 or 5.5, then that means this is a normal or if the fasting plasma glucose level fasting means minimum six to eight hours of the fasting you don't you didn't have to take any uh, things except the water so if the glucose level is a plasma glucose level is 99 or 100 or below it then we'll call it take it as a normal And if you take a diet or if you have the oral GTT, the oral glucose tolerance test, if you, in, the, in this test you drink a uh, different strength of the glucose and immediately after that, uh, uh, you can say one hour after that you can measure the plasma glucose level. If it reaches up to the 139 or remains below the 139 or 140, you will label it as a normal person. So in a normal person, the A1C should be about 5 or 5.5. Its fasting glucose level should be 99 and postprandial should be remain below 40. These are normal values. If these normal values are slightly above, that is, if the A1C reaches 5.7 to 6.4, then we label the patient as a pre-diabetic. Or if, in, if the fasting glucose level is uh, between 100 and 125, again the patient can be labeled as a pre-diabetic patient or a postprandial if this if postprandial level is 
between 140 to 199, we can label it as a pre-diabetic patient. But if the A1C is above 6.5 or the fasting level is above 126 or the postprandial level is above 200, then these are the uh, these patients are actually of the diabetes mellitus. So for the diabetes mellitus, the criteria is the fasting glucose level should be above 126 and of postprandial level it should be above 200 and A1C it should be 6.5 or above. So this is the definitions of the pre-diabetic, diabetic and the normal persons. Then here is the same diagram where the A1C is not included. You can also see we are not concerned the millimole because we are used in the Britain and in the America. We are here in Pakistan we use as a milligram per deciliter. So fasting should be below 110 and post prandial should be below uh, 140 milligram. This is a normal person. And in the pre-diabetic patient, the fasting should be between 110 and 125 and post prandial may be between 140 to 199. And in the diabetic patient, the patient who are the diagnosed patient of diabetes, that means your fasting level should be at the 126 or more than this one or the post prandial if it is moved above 200 mg per deciliter then you can label those patients as a diabetic patients. There are three main types of the diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes and the gestational diabetes. We have another diabetes which is known as the MODY MODY, MODY type diabetes. Type 1 diabetes. This is actually also known as the insulin dependent diabetes. Actually the type 2 diabetes may be the insulin dependent but usually we will call it type 1 diabetes or this other name for this is juvenile diabetes. This is developed, this can be developed in any age but occurs most frequently in the children and in the adolescents. In this, in this type of diabetes the problem is the insulin is absent. There is no or quite less insulin is also known as the insulin dependent diabetes, it is type 1 diabetes. And type 1 diabetes, we have to treat it with the insulin. We can't give it the tablets for this purpose. We have to use the insulin directly for those in the kids. Then the type, type 2 diabetes are also known as the maturity onset of the diabetes. Maturity onset diabetes, the type 2 diabetes. And this is more common. 90 to 95 percent of the people they are suffering from the type 2 diabetes. And in this insulin is there insulin is produced but not in normal quantity or maybe a normal quantity but the patient don't respond to that insulin in the type 1 there is no insulin but here in type 2 diabetes we have insulin but our receptors they are not responding to the insulin so other name for this that there is insulin resistance insulin resistance is there the insulin resistance means if you remember your previous lecture in which I have given you the details of how the insulin receptor functions. That is the phosphorylation and insulin receptor substrate 1, then phosphorylation of that substrate and then ultimately AKT is formed. This all things that the substrate phosphorylation and then AKT formation, they are not formed properly. That lead to the insulin resistance. That is insulin is there but insulin receptor is not responding properly. So in type 2 diabetes, the main problem is insulin resistance. Insulin production is not the main problem, but with the aging, insulin production is also reduced. So at the end, the insulin is also decreased and resistance is also there. So in the while treating type 2 diabetes, we have to give two things sometimes. We have to give the insulin if insulin level is decreased and this can be diagnosed by the C-peptide level. And at the same time, we have to give some drugs which can reduce the insulin resistance like the metformin. Then we have got the gestational diabetes that is diabetes during pregnancy. Hyperglycemia during pregnancy is caused by the insulin resistance and this resistance is due to the hormones of the pregnancy, insufficient insulin secretion due to beta cell dysfunction and already present predisposing factors like obesity, female hist family history. And that means that Hyperglycemia due to uh, during pregnancy is mainly due to the hormones of pregnancy 
and there is a functional beta cell dysfunction and if their predisposing factors are already present like obesity family history then the patient female can develop the gestational diabetes but the gestational diabetes is an indication that in future that female can get the actual diabetic patient he can be an actual diabetic patient and it has got its own complications there may be a, a premature birth there may be long duration of the delivery time or uh, long duration of the pregnancy all these things can happen then an other type of diabetes which is known as the MODY that is the maturity onset diabetes of the young maturity onset diabetes of the young in this diabetes it is actually this is a separate entity it may be due to the mutation of the glucose kinase gene it should be treated as a type 1 diabetes that means diabetes mellitus that means we have to use the insulin for it then what are the clinical manifestations or you can say sign and symptoms of the diabetes on one side you will see the polyuria polydipsia polyphagia polyuria that means more frequently uh, or more volume of the urine patient again goes in to the washroom again and again to pass the urine why it is because hyperglycemia that in during hyperglycemia more glucose this extra glucose act as an osmolar diuretic that means it retains water along with it and causes the diuresis that patient has got more frequency of the urine polyuria that means the polyuria due to the osmotic diuresis of the glucose it will lead to the dehydration and when the dehydration will be there the patient have to drink more and more water to relieve that dehydration and that will lead to the polydipsia that more thrust more thrust is there more thrust and there is a polyphagia that is the patient is still feeling hunger despite of eating well he still feel hunger actually there are different theories are there the one of the most important theory regarding polyphagia is the different nuclei of the uh, your hypothalamus they are involved in the polyphagia in the case of hyperglycemia then the other symptoms are the weight loss weight loss is due to the uh, wasting of the proteins and the usage of fat as a source of energy then nausea vomiting then the weakness weakness is again due to the wasting of the proteins then fatigue then increased blood sugar glucose level and glucose more glucose in the urine than glycosuria presence of glucose normally glucose is negative in the urine but in the diabetic patient glucose is present in the urine all these are the different signs and symptoms of the uh, you can say the diabetes then the rare signs and symptoms they are increased there is genital pruritus itching in the vagina that is very common in the ladies and the patient usually detected that they have got the diabetes over here then the, these are fungal infections usually this is a fungal infection which result in the pruritus pruritus means itching common presenting symptom in the female then repeated infections are there in which the uti infections are very common delayed wound healing altered immune and inflammatory responses are also prone uh, also due to the uh, hyperglycemia then here is a uh, equivalence uh, this uh, chart is showing the equivalence of a1c with the mean blood glucose level that if you have got the normally you have got 6 7 or at the most 8 so this is the normal glucose level normal a1c that if level of a1c level is 7 that means your mean glucose level is 150 milligram per deciliter if your glucose a1c comes to the 8 that means your mean blood as a uh, glucose level is 180 so this is a rough estimate that how you can calculate if you have got the test of a1c and a1c comes to the 9 you can estimate that the plasma sugar level average is approximately 250 so this chart shows the average correlation between the a1c and the mean blood glucose level in the milligram per deciliter and the millimole per deciliter we are concerned with the milligram per deciliter then sign of symptom we have seen all these things in the previous diagram then here is a graph showing the prevalence of the disease in pakistan and different uh, provinces of pakistan so sin is the topmost it is blue color for the male the male that 16 percent of the female of the male population the sin is suffering from the diabetes mellitus 
while approximately 11 12 or 12 percent females they are suffering from the diabetes so if the minimum is that in the kpk in the kpk the males are <coughs> approximately 10 percent or less sorry approximately 9 percent of the males they are suffering from the diabetes while the <coughs> females they are suffering more with the diabetes mellitus the females the other color is fear orange color is the female so females they are more suffering but if you compare it with other provinces the kpk prevalence of diabetes is less as compared to the same blochistan the punjab then diabetic facts these are very astonishing facts over 29 million people in the us these facts are from the usa or 9.3 percent of the population have the diabetes a very huge population is suffering from the diabetes then almost 30 percent of the people with the diabetes are undiagnosed this is a condition as us so you can think about you can compare the pakistan with that one how much large quantity will be here in pakistan then 86 million people have the pre-diabetes that is the 86 million they are going to be diabetic patient in the future then 15 to 30 percent of those with pre-diabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years then almost 20,000 children are diagnosed with diabetes per year risk of death for adults with diabetes 50 percent higher than for those without diabetes this is a very very you can say dangerous facts regarding the diabetes then what are the risk factors for the diabetes one of the very important is the overweight or obesity more fats between the muscles around the abdomen waist size for men is about 40 and for females above 35 inches is a risk factor for the diabetes then the diet high carb diet or the sweet drinks they are these people who are uh, using more carbohydrates in their diets and used to uh, take the cold drinks like sweet drinks they have got more chances to be diabetic in future the red meat as uh, you can see the red meat that uh, you can uh, uh, not the chicken but the not the chicken and the fish but the mutton is a red meat if you take the mutton or beef then you have got the risk for the diabetes and then the sedentary mode of life that means the persons who are inactive in their life they remain in their bed there's no exercise they don't move here and there they uh, use uh, the cars and bikes from door to door from door to market then these are sedentary mode of life they are we have more chances they are more risk for the developing diabetes then the age is very important above 45 is the risk factor for the diabetes then genetics if the family history is there your siblings are suffering from diabetes your parents are suffering from the diabetes then you have got the chances to develop diabetes then the gestational diabetes you have seen it in the previous time then the smoking is also a risk factor for the future diabetics then the cause of the hyperglycemia and the type 2 diabetes actually the main problem in the insulin uh, in the hyperglycemia type 2 diabetes that the insulin secretion is sometimes normal sometimes it's below normal but the main problem is insulin resistance and when the and the other thing is that is that the receptor and the poor receptor defects so whenever the insulin receptor what will happen there's increased glucose production from the liver breakdown of the glucose from the liver and this will cause the increased glucose then the muscle will not uptake the insulin through there using the GLUT4 so there will be hyperglycemia hyperglycemia because liver is going to producing more and more glucose your pancreas cannot do anything because the pancreas has got impaired insulin secretion if insulin was there then there will be the glucose will be utilized as a source of energy until glucose will be trapped and it will cause the fatty acid senses triglyceride all these things we have seen in the previous lecture but unfortunately we are in the type 2 diabetes pancreas is unable to secrete the insulin or if insulin is a normal level it can't, can't act on the receptor so and on the other side your muscle can't uptake the insulin because GLUT4 are not functioning properly so that's why there is increased glucose level is there this will cause the hyperglycemia then here's a comparison that if the glucose level is normal normal glucose is between 70 to 110 milligram per deciliter if the blood glucose level begin to rise what will happen that beta cell in the pancreas they will be stimulated 
and what will happen they will produce insulin and what insulin will do it will cause the uptake of glucose by the body cells it will cause the conversion of glucose to the glycogen storage form and the fat should be produced and saved ultimately the glucose level will be decreased but if the glucose level is going to fall then it will trigger the it will stimulate the alpha cells of pancreas they will secrete the glucagon glucagon what will it will do it will cause the conversion of glycogen to the glucose in the liver that means it will cause the release of glucose from the glycogen and it will cause what it will do it will increase the blood glucose level then there is a comparison between type 1 and type 2 diabetes uh, on first of all the different features of the onset that means start of the diabetes type 1 diabetes in the adolescent at any age mostly the young people and onset is usually sudden and the uh, body habits or the body uh, sorry status it may be the lean thin slim person or normal person but then type 2 diabetes usually it's obese but it's not the it's not true for all the people it's usually often it's obese then ketoacidosis which is a complication we will study it later on ketoacidosis is very common in the type 1 diabetes and in type type 2 diabetes a rare one then the autoantibodies they are usually present in the type 1 diabetes because now it is said that type 1 diabetes is due to the antibodies which are going to destroy your beta cells then these are un, these are absent in the type 2 diabetes then the endogenous insulin in the type 1 diabetes low or absent while in type 2 diabetes it may be normal it may be decreased or it may be increased then the concordance in identical twins 50 percent type 1 diabetes while 90 percent in the type 2 diabetes then prevalence type 1 diabetes is less prevalent as compared to the type 2 which is 90 to 95 percent prevalent here are the complications of diabetes what are the different complications of the diabetes blood that means hyperglycemia complications of hyperglycemia some are the acute complications like diabetic ketoacidosis like hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is more dangerous as compared to the hyperglycemia we will study later on how the hyperglycemia is going to cause the damage to your brain then diabetic non-ketotic hyperosmolar coma then we move to the chronic complication some are known as the microvascular complication that is retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy diabetic foot dermopathy and some are known as the macro vessels that is cerebrovascular accidents cardiovascular accidents peripheral vascular diseases so these are the different complications of the diabetes mellitus or the hyperglycemia then again the complications but written in different form acute diabetic ketoacidosis hyperglycemia hyperosmolar state hypoglycemia diabetic foot ulcers foot ulcers and infections then chronic one microvascular we have seen earlier the macrovascular so again the different types of the complications here the effects of hyperglycemia on a different organs of the body in the brain this is the transient ischemic attacks tia is very common cva cerebral vascular accident dementia loss of memory is common in the diabetic patient the microvascular in the eye retinopathy glaucoma cataracts they are common or earlier in the microvascular patient the complication the diabetes mellitus then heart disease acute coronary syndrome chronic heart failure is again prevalent in the diabetic patient then in the kidney microalbumin urea nephropathy is end stage renal disease actually in whole world and also in the pakistan diabetes is the most common cause of the renal failure most common cause of the renal failure the diabetes then the neuropathy is maybe the central neuropathy maybe the autonomic neuropathy and it may be the peripheral neuropathy all these things are different complications of the diabetes mellitus then we'll move to the very important thing that is how these things are how these complications or you can see the pathophysiology of these complications actually the main thing to understand the pathophysiology of all these things the normal for this we have to understand how the vessels are damaged how the vessels are damaged damaged vessels they have got in a lining which is known as the endothelial cell these are actually the endothelial linings this endothelial causes it to release nitric oxide and other factors which cause lead to its dilatation of the vessels growth inhibition anti thrombosis effects and anti inflammation 
and on the other side it may be the constriction it may be the growth promotion it may be the prothrombosis it may be the pro inflammation i will go into the details of all these things here again you can see the vascular endothelial dysfunction this is a very important in diabetic patient actually insulin resistance or hyper insulin resistance when insulin resistance is there the sometimes the patient pancreas secretes more and more insulin what is going to cause actually the nitric oxide has a big role in the development of the complication other things are also there we will see soon that is the e nitric oxide epithelial nitric oxide synthase this is an enzyme which causes the production of the insulin uh, sorry production of nitric oxide from the endothelial cells these are the endothelial cells this is the epithelial nitric oxide synthase an enzyme which is responsible for the production of the nitric oxide then its its expression is reduced then this enzyme cofactor they are also reduced then this, this enzyme the epithelial nitric oxide synthase activation is also reduced this what will happen the decrease on the other side nitric oxide degradation is increased that means if nitric oxide is produced to some extent is degraded earlier then endothelin release endothelin causes the vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation so ultimately there is no bioavailability of the nitric oxide when nitric oxide is not there what will happen there is a uh, vcam receptor that is vascular adhesion molecules and then we have the icam that is a uh, adhesion cell adhesion molecules these are the these adhesion molecules whether the vascular adhesion molecules in vascular cell adhesion molecules and there is again another adhesion molecule they are increased they entangle the macrophages this and macrophages they move inside and here they form going to form the foam cells we will see later on all these things in a handmade diagram and the reactive oxygen species are produced soon we will see a handmade diagram in which these details are present this is the how the ross is our reactive oxygen species uh, is going to damage your body we will see later on the all these things here is the diagram what will happen in your body whenever there is a hyperglycemia how the endothelial is going to be damaged actually the damage uh, in the hyperglycemia not to the endothelium but below the endothelium basically in the tunica intima here is your endothelial cells this is the bluish color endothelial cells these are the epithelial cells which are known as endothelium this hyperglycemia actually these endothelial cells they don't need insulin for the entry of glucose into the cell they don't need insulin and excess of glucose enters into the cell and this excess of the glucose they are going to cause when they are metabolized they will cause the production of the reactive oxygen species we will see later on in detail what are the reactive oxygen species and these reactive oxygen species they produce advanced glycation products actually these are advanced glycation products actually the proper word is advanced glycation products and glycation products these are the present and these products they are the main you can say responsible for the damage to the different parts of the cells then these ROS they stimulate the protein kinase C PKC this protein kinase C it will increase the vascular endothelial growth factor this protein kinase C after stimulation by the ROS it is going to increase the vascular endothelial growth factor this vegetative or the vascular growth vascular endothelial growth factor will cause the cell growth it will cause the angiogenesis then this protein kinase C also increase the production of endothelin this endothelin will cause or act as a platelet aggregation then this protein kinase C also stimulate the nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of the B cell NFKB nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of the B cell this NFKB is going to stimulate the increase it will cause the increase permeability between the cells and it also cause the production of the ICAM and the VCAM these are the receptors vascular cell adhesion molecules they are produced over here and they will attach the monocytes with them 
so when the permeability will increase once they are attached with the these receptor this monocyte will permeate will move between the cells and enter into the tunica with entima here they will move in and at the same time this permeability will increase the movement of low density lipoprotein beneath this endothelial cell so once the monocytes they move down beneath the endothelial cell and ldl also moved through the permeability beneath the endothelial cell it into the tunica intima this monocyte become macrophages because they are not now they are fixed and they engulfs the ldl now this macrophage and engulfing the ldl they are known as a foam cells these foam cells they are release the tnf alpha tumor necrosing factor alpha they release il1 these are the pro inflammatory cytokines and these cytokines will cause the inflammation then ultimately this foam cell burst out and they will release their ldl and they will plaque formation starts over here and ultimately this area this whole area is going to be damaged by the inflammation by the platelet aggregation oh sorry and by the plaque formation and once this plaque is form is going to damage the endothelium from beneath and if this plaque reaches to the surface then it may be dislodged it may form first it form a thrombus ultimately it will remove from this one and it can move to anywhere it can move to the heart it can move to the brain any complication can happen so this diagram showing the basic of basics of all the complication basically your endothelium is responsible or you can say beneath the endothelium all the process of the destruction is going to occur due to the excess or due to excessive glucose because glu your endothelium don't need insulin for the movement of glucose into the uh, endothelial cells i think you have well understand so you can again see this diagram by stopping the video you can understand you can read this diagram very well then high glucose concentration increase endothelial cell permeability as i have told you earlier activation of protein kinase c alpha inside the cell extra glucose causes the non enzymatic glycation of the proteins this will lead to the formation of the ages proteins and lipids they become glycated advanced glycation and products age so proteins and lipids they get glycated and they are known as the ages then the free radical uh, formation is very common in diabetes and there is a lot of details for this i am not going to the all the details for you people it's, it's quite lengthy for you that how the free radicals they are produced in diabetic patients main source of the oxidative stress is the mitochondria during oxidative metabolism in the mitochondria a component of the utilized oxygen is reduced to water and the remaining oxygen is transformed to the oxygen free radical which is an important uh, reactive oxygen species here is the role of the nitric oxide this is a very good diagram to understand the nitric oxide which is now available in the form of tablets in the different countries of the world in the young age in 20s your vessel is quite you can say dilated and your endothelium is quite well in uh, status then in the age of 30 you will see the nitric oxide it is here is 100% nitric oxide age of 30 80% nitric oxide so arteries become thick the diameter is decreased then 40 then 50 and you will see at the age of 60 or plus your arteries they are suffering their wall is going to be very very uh, thick and their diameter is low now their diameter is reduced now we have got just 15% of nitric oxide at the age of 60 that's why the nitric oxide main function is produced by the endothelial cells in main function to keep the neat and clean your endothelium and to keep it dilated so once the nitric oxide is not there we have more chances of the atherosclerosis the nitric oxide is produced through the conversion of the amino acid l arginine to the l citrulline by an enzyme that is known as nitric oxide synthase nitric oxide works as a vasodilatory substance antiplatelet anti proliferative permeability decreasing anti inflammatory anti oxidant properties 
Nitric oxide inhibits rolling and adhesion of the leukocytes as well as cytokine induced expression of vascular cell adhesion molecules like ICAM1 and VCAM1. All these things are and they also have the effect on the monocytic chemotactic proteins. So nitric oxide has got a very important role in a normal person and in the old age and also in the diabetic patients. So diabetic neuropathies that patient has got altered sensation in the hands and feet. They are known as the diabetic neuropathies. Diabetic neuropathies are actually this is a nerve damaging disorder and associated with the diabetes mellitus. Diabetic neuropathy. We have got the autonomic neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy is going to affect your autonomic nervous system in which very important uh, example is the erectile dysfunction in diabetic patient is due to the autonomic neuropathies. While the other autonomic neuropathies are due to the microvascular injury that is the small blood vessel which are supplying the nerves that is known as vasa visorum, vasa nervosum also they are damaged in addition to the macrovascular condition that means the, in short the diabetic, diabetic neuropathy is due to the basically the nerve is supplied by a blood vessel when that blood vessel is injured due to the diabetes due to its complication then the function of the nerve is also impaired leading to the neuropathies then another very important pathway which is known as the sorbitol aldose reductase pathway or polyol pathway the polyol pathway is going to cause uh, you can say complications of the diabetes in those tissues which are insulin independent like your kidneys like your eye the retina in which they are going to cause the complications what happens here the polyol pathway appears to be implicated in the diabetic complications especially in the microvascular damage to the insulin independent area what are those areas, the retina, kidney, and the nerves? Actually, the sorbitol cannot cross. In this pathway, I move to the next, you will see. That here is a polyol pathway or the sorbitol pathway. What happens over here? The glucose is converted into sorbitol. The sorbitol is converted into the fructose. So, once sorbitol is formed, increased concentration of when the Actually, these tissues, the retina tissue, kidney tissues, actually they don't need insulin for the movement of uh, glucose into them. So the insulin has no role, but the excess glucose, or you can say hyperglycemia, whenever there's hyperglycemia, the glucose can easily enter into the retina cells. They can enter into the uh, your uh, kidney cells. Once it enters there, some of the glucose is converted and utilized in the food uh, formation of the ATPs. But the extra glucose enters in the polyol pathway. And once it enters into the polyol pathway, it's going to form the sorbitol. This sorbitol, it cannot cross the cell membrane. And when it accumulates in the cell, it produces osmotic stresses on the cell by drawing water into the insulin independent tissue. So this is the reason that why the, these patients they develop cataract earlier while there is a renal failure in the patients with the diabetes. Although there is no role of the insulin over here, but the excess of glucose, extra glucose is going to cause all these complications. Here you can see again in this diagram that the persistent hyperglycemia, the polyol pathway is become activated. Whenever the hyperglycemia is stimulated, this pathway. And when this pathway is activated, you will see that NADH is decreased, sorbitol is increased, fructose is increased, and NADH also increased, oblique, this one, and redox imbalance is there. So fructose, it will cause increased glycation, it will cause the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, then sorbitol will cause the osmotic stress, then decrease, nitric oxide synthesis, vascular employment, all these things ultimately they will lead to the diabetic complication that is retinopathy, nephropathies, all these things are there. And the same diagram. This is the same diagram, we have seen all these things. Insulin itself is an important stimulus for the nitric oxide synthesis 
since it is activation this is a very important sentence that is the insulin itself is going to stimulate the production of nitric oxide so nitric oxide is decreased not only because of age but also decreased due to the absence of the insulin then what is the role of the oxidative stress actually this oxidative stress is beyond your limit we will see we will discuss it later on and this is a diagram of the diabetic foot this is a diabetic for the patient suffering from the diabetes they usually suffer from the diabetic foot because the the vessels which are supplying to the foot they are very small in diameter and when their endothelium is damaged it will lead to the reduced blood supply lead to the gangrene formation in these patients again the gangrene so this was all the uh, about the diabetes and its complication diabetic nephropathy retinopathy and macrovascular microvascular things these all are concerned with the diabetes in the next video we will see the glucagon hypoglycemia and other things remaining. Thank you very much.